And he, <laughs> he wakes that king up and says, you touch that woman and I'll kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, what are you even talking about? <laughs> you know, and and you know, the king gets all up in Abraham and says, why, why are you telling me about the sister thing? You know? But listen, she was a holy woman of old who trusted God with a husband who wasn't obedient in that whole passage, man. It's a, it's a beautiful Thing. And, and so, ladies, when you're struggling with this and you're going, what does this mean? Because I can see submitting to my husband the way that I do to the Lord and the way that uh, the, the church does to Christ. And I get the whole fitting thing. But, man, what do I do? I've got a husband who isn't obedient to the word. You just be obedient to the word. Be a holy woman who trusts God. To deal with her husband and, and listen, you put God to that test and watch him deal with your husband Amen. to bring him to a point of thank you. Amen. 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 Okay. The decision then. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, have you ever noticed this in, in these passages here, ladies? It, it says, wives, submit, what, what's that next word? Yeah. Submit yourselves. Colossians 3, and verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves. Okay, well, what I want you to notice is that when it comes to submission, God doesn't tell husbands... Now, husbands, you've been called to provide headship and leadership in your home. And so, husbands, you keep that woman under submission. <laughs> See how that works for you. <laughs> and so what God does is rather than you that's telling good. her that's good for what she ought to do. Come on. He says to the women, submit yourselves. And what I want you to see is it is a decision that you make. It, it, it is a, a spirit that you willingly offer. <laughs> okay, and I want to say this to you, ladies, this is in your notes. Remember, you can't be living in subjection to Christ. You already know where this is going? Yeah. If you can't, or if you're not living in subjection to your husband. And, and I, once again, I want to say, I see this all the time. <clears throat> Women that have just their husband. I'm going on my relationship with Jesus. <laughs> and you can do your thing. And when you come around, yeah. then you might, and, but I'm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and get to church and be all. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> <Man. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just saying you cannot be in subjection to Christ if you're not in subjection to your husband. He tells you how to deal with those guys. Okay, and so that leads to the next question for introspection. The way I put it in your notes is to whom or to what am I most submissive? Okay, I, I, again, I don't, I, and I, I don't want to, to be up in your stuff, ladies, but could I just say to you that some of you are still more submissive to your daddy than you are to your husband? You know, it didn't say submit yourself to your mother's husband. Wow. 
It, it said, submit yourself to your own, own husband. Oh. Some of y'all are more submissive to your boss <coughs> than you are your own husband. Again, see it all the time. At work, yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. Okay, right away, sir. And go through all day <laughs> doing everything that the stinking guy says and come home. Say what? <laughs> 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 okay, here's another one. Some of y'all are more submissive to the pastor of your church than you are your own husband. That's good. Shall we go deep? Yeah. <laughs> Some women are more submissive to their own bodies than they are their own husband. <coughs> and man, they will cater to their every whim. Oh, I'm cold. Oh, I'm hot. Oh, I'm hungry. Ooh, I'm hungry. <laughs> and whatever our body says. <laughs> submissive. <laughs> Some of us are more submissive to our own will than we are our own husband. And, and that's that's where it comes down to. It, it, it's a matter of our will. Submit yourselves unto your own husband. And, and again, ladies, I ask you to ask yourself today. To whom or to what am I most submissive? Okay, so God says, okay, ladies, I, I, I'm, I'm giving to you the responsibility of helping your husband. Okay, so how do we do that? First of all, you help your husband by assisting him in his mission. You help your husband by offering your submission and then letter C, you help your husband by conveying your permission. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? All the men do. <laughs> okay, and again, I'm not I'm not saying that to be true. <laughs> I, 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 for real, I think I would be remiss in not telling you that one of the key ways that you help your husband, and <clears throat> what is perhaps the greatest offering of submission, is conveying to your husband your permission. Okay, don't, don't miss this, ladies. Uh, and and we, we, I, I mentioned this in a previous point. I, I hope it's not just because I'm a male that I keep emphasizing this. I hope it's because the Bible is trying to say this to us. That a, a, a physical relationship with your husband helps him like nothing else. I, I, for real, ladies, it helps him in literally every way it helps him physically mentally emotionally psychologically and even spiritually <laughs> and, and this is why in first corinthians chapter 7 <clears throat> verses 2 through 5 okay the first verse is it's not it, it's good for a man not to touch a woman he's talking about uh, you know, a physical relationship Okay, don't be out there having physical relationships with women. Nevertheless, now, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. There is a way that this works. 
Let the husband render unto the wife, and I, I love this King James English. <laughs> Do benevolence. What a discreet way <laughs> of communicating this. You know what I'm saying? Let, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. There's some benevolence she is due. So render it, man. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body. But the husband and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. The wife has power all over his body. Defraud ye not one the other. Don't use this as a weapon. Yeah. Don't don't get to the place that because maybe you're not desiring that yourselves that you don't render to your spouse what God calls do benevolence. It, it's what we signed up for in marriage. Yeah. And he says, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. Okay. It, there, there may be times spiritual when you're going through some things where you guys feel like, man, you know what? We just need to kind of not go there and just totally focus on these spiritual things. It says that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, but then, okay, just do that for a time and then come together that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Okay. And, and so this, this is why I, I am saying to you, ladies, and, and obviously to the men as well, but typically, yeah, I don't have to preach this to the men. Give her what she's due. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we might need to reel that in a little bit. Okay. But I, I, I would just encourage you, you ladies in the light of trying to get our heads wrapped around how this whole marriage thing works figure out how to make your man feel like a man learn to make your man feel like a man I, and I say that to you Because when he loses his masculinity, when he loses his maleness, that I do understand can drive you crazy sometimes. But man, when he loses that, he loses his manhood. And not only is that not profitable for him, it is not profitable for you. And it is not profitable for anybody that's still under your roof. Right. Those kids, man. And it's a, I think it's very important for you to know that <coughs> except in rare occasions, most men find their masculinity in their sexuality. And it is a part of this whole design that God had. God, God got it, y'all. He knows what he's doing, man. And to the, the finest, most remote detail, he's got this thing. And then the question for introspection is, am I conveying to my husband the spirit of 1 Corinthians 7, 4? Okay, that, that you remember what that verse was? That was the rendering to your husband, do benevolence. Have you communicated that spirit of permission that I, I, my body is not mine, it's yours? And as long as we're doing some introspection, I, I would just 
maybe ask you ladies to consider this. If I was a man and was married to me, would I look forward to coming home to me? And so just consider it. I think I will become some kind of idiot for me to, to press what that ought to mean to you. But, but in light of that man in your life, that it's so much of what he's about is, is around, again, it's, it, remember one of our, our, our sisters, Christine, uh, talked about that. It's, it's all three of those things that we talked about. And this is not the only, but I will tell you, it's a biggie. And, and 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 so you know again we we don't want to overemphasize the outward and, and any of that, uh, but there is a there's a spirit that that a, a woman can convey that is so inviting to a man and so welcoming to a man and and, and you've seen them, ladies, you've seen them, ladies. That you go, I didn't want to be married to her. And I'm just saying, don't be that woman. Don't, don't be that man. God's, he's got this. I, I get it, man. It, it probably, your marriage probably didn't go the way you dreamed it would. Okay? Sorry. What can we do about it? Hey, why don't we go to a why don't we go to a little marriage conference for two days? Okay, and you guys have done that. And obviously, there's a there's a lot more. But again, I, I think there's only so much we can assimilate at, at, at any given time. And so we we actually y'all there's seven biblical responsibilities for a husband. There's seven biblical responsibilities for a wife. We looked at two for each. So yeah, there's plenty more, but these that we've talked about, well, oh, man, if, if you can, if you can nail those in the next year, <laughs> man, I'll tell you, you're going to be well on your way to blessedness, and, and and God did want us to be blessed. That's why He placed us in Christ. Because he wants to give to us all spiritual blessings. And that's where they are.